G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, I'm still pushing on with this. And I welded a bracket on, put some wheels on it so that when the lid swings back, it won't topple over. These are just some old lawnmower wheels. And uh, this will give it plenty of uh, stability. So they'll, they'll rest on the ground on the same plane, same level as the base. So the lid can swing back and it can't tip over. Plus I can also then wheel it around when I've got it full of, you know, in the insulation gooby goo. So I um, I could mount a, uh, a vertical lever on here somewhere or a place I can put one because the lid's going to swing back and it might, it probably would fail it. So I could just put some tube there and then I could just take out the handle when I want to use it and stick in a bit of pipe to wheel it round. So that's always a possibility. Yeah, so that's just old scrap. The welding is fair to middling. I'm not the welder I used to be, but uh, I get by. And uh, underneath, you can see, see the way I did it. I just brought it across. I've hooked it under the edge. It's getting heavy. And just tacked it and then I slipped this and folded it back a bit so I've got the same plane pretty much. So that's, that's going alright. What else have I done? Whoops. She's just, oh, she's just, she's just balancing up there. And you can see I've got a, a handle on it now, so I can uh, just pivot it back, lift it up, swing it back, and uh, it's back from the heat, so with a gloved hand it should be okay. So it goes back through there, and then I'll put a, uh, I'll put a po positive stop on the lid so that around you swing it back and it just brings it in line it's a matter of whether I swing it left or right I'm right handed so I thought I'll have it to so I can swing it back that way and then I'm going to have to put a slot in here somewhere for the crucible uh, arm or holder to go in so I'm going to slot it down here or here and I haven't figured that out yet just to get these wheels done and then I can get on and put uh, the mix in it I think well I'm getting pretty damn close now so yeah so here's some reasonably flat cement and we can just swing it back and it can't topple. The wheels don't let that happen. So that's working really good. Yeah. I'm pleased with that. Yeah. So that's what you want. Some wheels. So when that's back, yeah, you know, any handle to tilt it back, to can it back on that end is going to be in the way of the lid. So I'm going to have to make uh, any handle that goes on there removable so I can uh, just stick it in the wheel it round. That shouldn't be any problem. I've got plenty of channel that can go in there and then shove a bit of pipe in it and the lid can only slide back and hit the handle anyway. So. So here is on the bench, so this is going to be the, the front side with the flame torch goes in, the wheels are on, you can't, well it's not a dead flat bench, so, but basically yeah, it can't go anywhere or tip over or anything, and the ground's not necessarily going to be even anyway, but I've got that pretty right. 
plenty of noise going on around here, a lot of building going on, so it's, you know, the videos have got a bit of background noise, but you can't do much about it. So now it's a matter of what do I line it with? That's the big question. Now I've got some uh, stuff that I can use. I'll show you what I've got. Now I've got this stuff. It's uh, high temperature refractory grout. Ah, oh, sorry, mortar. So it's mortar for refractory use. It's meant for making pizza ovens and stuff like that. And I thought, well, that'd be good. I reckon that'd be better than using cement. You could mix it with perlite, or you could mix it with possibly bentonite clay. Now, this is the big question I've got. Should I be using, should I be using bentonite clay and this, or should I be using bentonite clay and perlite? Or should I be using this and perlite? Or should I buy a bag of refractory cement and use that with the other stuff I've got? I'm not sure, you know, which is going to be the better unit, the better mix, the better recipe as far as standing up to the heat. I'll show you the bentonite I've got. All right, well, here's the bentonite. It's actually stock feed. It's, it's very fine bentonite clay and I use that for making casting moulds and it's fine for that. They give this to cattle to uh, stop them crapping in the truck when they transport them because they get nervous, you know, so they get uh, a bit loose. So they put this in the cattle feed and uh, it could even be a conditioner, I'm not, not sure. It's also used for lining uh, bore casings when they drill bores for water for windmills and stuff you can buy a big bag of this that was, that was a, that's a 20 kilo bag you can buy a big bag, big bag of that for 20, 20 25 dollars probably from any stock agent so you know don't go buying cat litter you can get this stuff and it'll uh, do the same thing and then perlite, of course, you buy that from the garden centres and I haven't got any of that. Oh, I've only got a little bit of that left behind the shed. But that's pretty cheap too. So, yeah, I'm in a bit, a bit of a quandary now. And then over here we've got kids' uh, play pit, you know, sand pit, um, fine, very fine washed sand. So, you know, I can mix it in with the bent line, I can mix it in with the, with the mortar mix, or I can mix it in with uh, refractory cement. So I've got all these options and I don't really, I'm not sure which way to go with this. I want it to be durable and I know that perlite will crumble, you know, it, it definitely packs up. I'll show you the old, uh, the old furnace I've got. So here's the old furnace and that was lined with perlite and just ordinary bit of sand and ordinary um, building cement, you know, just... Um, stuff I built houses out of so uh, I mean it's had a lot of use it stood up pretty well but you can see it's it's starting to get pretty crumbly and it's uh, it's definitely seen better days but it's still usable it's still got life in it and I'll keep using that and, until I get this thing done but uh, yeah it's, uh, it's fallen to bits it's oh, making a mess too. So I really don't want to use perlite unless I have to. And it will be lighter for sure, you know. Now, of course, the best option is that ceramic wool, you know, that uh, is apparently pretty damn good. It's light and you just have to seal it with something so the flame doesn't get onto it, apparently, so you could use... You could use pizza oven mortar mix to do that probably. And I've already got that. But the trouble with that ceramic blanket is it's so damn expensive. I priced it, you know, on the internet and wow, sort of like, holy hell, I don't want to pay that much for something that's just, you know, just a bit of a knock-up thing just for a foundry use. And I, if it's heavy enough that I can't lift it, well, it's no big deal. I've got wheels, so... I'm not worried about the weight, really. Give me your best shot on this. What do you reckon I should do? Which way should I go?
Okay, that's it for now. We're getting there. See you next time. Cheers.